What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and today we're going to be redoing the Grounded Trinket tier list. Now, I did one of these ages ago, back when 1.0 released, and since then there has been a lot of new trinkets added to the game. There is now a total of 32 trinkets in the game. As you can see here, if I scroll down, we have every single one of them. As you can see, I made this list myself this time, which means the badges are all labelled. I put labels on all the images so that we know what they are, because last time it was just blank images and you kind of had to remember which was which. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to be ranking these based on how easy they are to get in the game, how powerful they are in the game, my opinions of them. As always, this is my opinion. Don't be too offended. Don't cry in the comments, please. This is for people who are playing on medium difficulty. I'm not going to be ranking it based on if you're on mild or woe. This is for an average person playing on medium difficulty, what I think of how good these trinkets are. Now, first up, we have the biomedical badge. Now, this badge will give you trickle regen, but it will convert your food at a much quicker rate. So you'll start starving very quickly, but you will gain extra regeneration. Um, this one obviously is a guaranteed. You dig it up in the sandbox, which makes it very easy to get. Um, I'm going to put this in D tier. I'm going to be honest, I never use this. I don't think it's worth using. If you want extra regeneration, use a bandage, uh, use the ladybug armor, use um, sticky slop that also gives you a regeneration effect. Don't use the biomedical badge. Your food drains really quickly with it. It's really not worth using. Uh, so I'm just going to put it in D tier and we're just going to move on. Now, this is where the list is going to change massively because next we have the Broodmother Trinket. Now, previously, these trinkets used to be very, very hard to get, but now they are much easier to get if you're using Dissection Expert, if you're stealing using Rascal Rogue. Uh, you can get this maybe after killing three or four Broodmothers now, whereas it used to take close to 100, if not more, kills to get the trinket. So they're much, much easier to get than they used to be. Now, obviously, this trinket makes it so that your summons do poison damage. I'm going to put this trinket in C tier, I think. It is not entirely useless, but there is a trinket later in the video, which is much, much better than it if you're using a summoner build. For summoner builds, it is not a great trinket, I'll be honest. It's good early game, but once you get later into the game, it's not very useful. Next, we have the Compliance Badge. Now, a lot of people like to rant and rave about this badge. This is the one that makes it so that when you parry an attack, your health gets healed, but you take more damage every time you get hit. My opinion of this one has changed massively. I used to really like this, but nowadays I'm not as big of a fan. I'll put it in B tier. I can understand the value of this badge. Um, obviously, it's easy to get. It's a guaranteed uh, drop. You get it from the hedge near the plug. I understand the value here, but personally, I'd rather just use smoothies with like ladybug armor than use the compliance badge in order to heal myself. I'm not a huge fan of the thing, but it can be really good, especially against enemies that do a lot of attacks, like the broodmother, for example. If you're parrying those attacks, it will heal your health massively. But if you get a hit, you're going to get hit for massive damage. So um, definitely don't use it on woe, but as I said, this is a medium difficulty tier list, so I'm going to put it in the B tier. Next, we have the fluffy dandelion tuft. Now, this is the regular dandelion tuft. Breaks relatively easily, but it can protect you from fall damage. It's a solid A tier. Um, I can't put it in S because it's not perfect. It used to be much, much better. You used to be able to deploy it, and you would never take fall damage. Now, you have to hold that thing for half an hour just to prevent the fall damage, and even then, sometimes, you still take fall damage. It doesn't slow you down as much as it used to, so I'm not as much of a fan as I used to be of it, which is why... I'm going to put it in A tier. It's not great anymore. It used to be great. It's not great anymore. Next, we have the defense badge. Now, this one increases your damage resistance by 25%, but reduces the damage you deal by 15%. I can't lie. I've been a huge fan of this badge recently, uh, particularly on Woe, but obviously, like I said, we're ranking on medium here. So the reason this is really good is because if you're using a heavy set of armor, Heavy armor provides 30% damage resistance. So by equipping this badge, you then have 55% damage resistance, which means when you get hit, 55% of that damage is instantly thrown out the window. Gone. Didn't ever happen. The remaining 45 is then reduced by the armor that you have on, and then you take the damage of the remaining. Um, I'm a huge, huge fan of this badge. Obviously, again, it's a badge, guaranteed to get it. 
by uh, by just going to a specific location on the map. This one is in the haze in particular. I'm going to put this in A tier. For those who struggle with perfect blocking, I really suggest this badge. It's really, really good. Um, obviously, like I say, it reduces your damage, but it's only by 15%. The damage reduction it gives your player is crazy, crazy good. I think this is a massively underrated badge in the game, and I'd highly recommend using it. Next, we have the Entomologist badge. All the badges seem to be next to each other, weirdly. These are just in alphabetical order. I guess a lot of the badges are early in the alphabet. This one here is in the barbecue spill um, in the skeleton, and what it does is it increases your attack, but it gives you imperfect block making it um, almost impossible to perfect block attacks, is D tier. Uh, perfect blocking is one of the most essential mechanics in Grounded, and without perfect blocking, you become a sponge who gets absolutely destroyed by every enemy in the game. You're basically just a target. Uh, it's terrible. Don't use this badge. Wh whatever you do, the extra attack damage is not worth it, I promise you. Next, we have the Billy Hog Stopper. Now, since I last ranked this one, the game has changed massively. Spicy and salty weapons will now make your food cooked and jerky when upon death. So um, they are much, much better and you can get food on the go much easier now, making this not as good as it used to be. This is a really, really rare drop, really hard to get from the Billy Hog. I would now put this in... I think C tier. It's very hard to get. You don't need it anymore because you can just get food on the go by killing aphids or weevils using a spicy weapon for food. Um, it's just not what it used to be. I can't really rate this rate this trinket very highly anymore. It's not great, to be honest. Next, we have the feather fletchling. Now, this one is gotten from uh, crow feathers, for those who don't know. If it's a small crow feather, 1% chance. If it's a big crow feather, 2% chance. This one makes it so that when you shoot an arrow... Uh, if you get exhausted from shooting the arrow, your exhaustion time is reduced. This is a D tier trinket. There are so many better trinkets for bow users in particular, and I just can't at all see why you would want to use this trinket. It's basically useless. Uh, don't use it. it. It's a D tier trinket. Next, we have the fluffy dandelion tuft. Now, this is very similar to the dandelion tuft, but it is harder to get because it is a rare drop from dandelions. Uh, the pro to it, though, is that essentially it has more durability than this one. Uh, the biggest complaint I have with this uh, Dandelion Tuft is it costs 5,000 raw science to duplicate, which is crazy expensive. It doesn't need to be that expensive. Um, it has much higher durability. I'm going to put it in an A tier. I think it, it goes alongside the Dandelion Tuft. It's slightly harder to get, but it has much more durability. If I get a spare one, I'll usually chuck it on and use it until it runs out, and then I'll just go back to the regular dandelion tuft. It's not good enough to the point where it's worth duplicating, but I still carry one around to reduce fall damage if I have a spare one lying around. Next, we have the fungal charm. This one drops from um, the fungal growth in the haze, and it is really, really good. It reduces explosive damage, which is very good if you're fighting the infected broodmother, the infected wolf spider, anything infected in the haze um it is a very 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 good trinket is it an s tier trinket though no i'm gonna say it's an a tier trinket just because it can be difficult to get depending on how lucky you are it is obviously a rare drop from the haze so i'm gonna say it's an a tier it's not quite s tier because it's not an easy to get trinket you could play a long long time and not get this trinket although it is very, very effective against some of the very difficult enemies later on in the game. Next, we have the Health and Safety Badge. Now, this one, I'm going to be honest, I haven't used it a lot. So my opinion of this is a bit strange. Uh, it gives you lifesteal, but it also gives you fresh wound, which basically is a bleed effect constantly. I don't know why you'd want to use this. If you want lifesteal, use the Tiger Mosquito Rapier. Use the Mosquito Needle. Use the Tick Mako Akawiwa. Don't use the health and safety badge that's going to give you a bleed effect. I understand they probably stack with each other, and that would make it technically pretty good. Um, but you've got enough lifesteal as it is with Ladybug Armor and a Tick Maka Waka Wiwa. You don't need to throw a uh, health and safety badge on top of it. Plus, to get this one, you have to get inside of the wasp's nest, which means you already have to have defeated wasps and be pretty late into the game. It's not worth it for how late into the game it is, in my opinion. Next, we have the Hot Char Char Charm. Now, 
This one is uh, a bit of a pain to get. You can only get it from candies with a 2% drop rate from the candy every time you break it. But a lot of enemies are weak to spicy in the game. Um, personally, I don't find myself using these a lot. I'm going to put it in B tier because I'm not a huge fan of using it. Um, it is one of the easier ones to get, but... I just don't like using these charms for extra damage. There's only certain situations in which some of them can be useful. And the spicy one just isn't useful because there's not a lot of enemies weak to spicy damage. In terms of difficult enemies, that is. Like bosses and stuff late into the game, there's not many weak to spicy. Next, we have the Infected Broodmother Trinket. Now, I haven't used this trinket much. Again, I will be completely honest. I've barely had a chance to use it. But it makes it so that your summons can do explosive attacks when they attack. Now, this sounds really good, but I can't understand why you would want this trinket over some of the other trinkets in the game, especially for a summoner build. Um, there are much better summoner build trinkets. I'm going to put this alongside the Broodmother trinket because the Broodmother one does poison damage. This one does explosive damage. I would say they're on a similar level. Um, you could argue this is more difficult to get, but it's not really. You just steal it using Rascal Rogue. So I'll put them on the same tier as each other because they both just give special effects for your summons. I think there's a better summoner trinket later in the video. Next, we have the Insulating Lava Spike. This gives you sizzle protection. Um, it's very, very easy to get. Honestly, I'll just put it in S tier. It's very easy to get. You just go to the uh, Ladybird Lava Cave in the upper yard and you take on a few of them and eventually you'll get it really, really easily. It's very good if you're in the sandbox or if you're going to the hot charcoal area um, or if you're trying to do the Coltana defense to get the Coltana recipe. There are no drawbacks whatsoever to this trinket. Uh, only positives. The only negative, as I would say, about this is that you can't use it everywhere around the map. Like, you're not going to use it when you go into the termite nest or when you go into the stump lab. But in terms of where it is being used, it is really, really good. It doesn't have any negative effects to it. So I can't complain about it. It's very easy to get as well. It's got to be an S tier trinket. Next, we have the intern badge. Now, since the last video, this one is not as good, I would say, because now you can get hauling hero with coziness, which will already increase your hauling capacity. So you don't really need the intern badge for the extra hauling anymore because you're not really going to be carrying around like... 50 items at once i think the maximum now is like 39 or something if you had everything equipped um i don't think you necessarily need it anymore but it is really easy to get and it is still useful i'm going to put it into a b tier this time it is easy to get it is useful but it does reduce your movement speed when using it and you could now just use things like hauling hero and the fluffy pupa hat for extra hauling strength and you don't necessarily need to use the intern badge anymore next we have the Left Elf Charm. Now, this is the one that you find inside of the uh, pond lab area. And what it does is it makes it so that when you perfect block, it will repair your shield. I've never used this in my life. I really, really am not a fan of this trinket. Uh, I don't see really a use for it. I'm going to also put the Right Elf Charm in the same one. This repairs your weapon upon perfect blocking realistically what is it what why do you need this just carry a stack of repair glue to repair your stuff the only advantage i can see is the shield one at least like shields are difficult to repair but they just have so much durability already you don't really need to carry these to repair your stuff um and then in terms of the combined version sarah's charm i'll put it one tier above in b tier um bit expensive to craft but you've got to admit it's better than these two individually because it combines the two of them it makes it so when you perfect block it repairs your shield and your weapon. Um, it's cool, but realistically, the biggest problem with them is they don't repair armor. So if you're using this, um, you still need to carry a stack of repair glue to repair your armor at some point. So you might as well not use it and use the repair glue to just repair your um, weapons as well as your armor. Next, we have the Mantis Trinket. Now, this trinket makes it so that when you land a critical hit, it gives you a stamina boost, kind of similar to how Parry Master makes it so that when you parry, you gain stamina. Personally, I'm going to put this drink in D tier. I'm not putting it in C tier, let's be honest. Um, it gives you stamina when you hit a crit. There's much, much better trinkets if you're running a crit build that you should use. And using the Mantis trinket, it's not good. It's a lot easier to get than it used to be, to be fair. Like, you can get it easily now. You just steal it from the Mantis. I stole it on my first punch fighting it for the first time, which was very nice. But the biggest problem with it is 
The crit energizer is not great. There's so many other trinkets you could use that'd be so much better. Next, we have the power droplet. Now, this has been changed since we last did it. So let me cover it real quick. This gives you fury, which means unarmed attacks have a 25% chance to deal a second hit. These second hits deal six damage and are able to inherit effects from mutations and armor intended for different damage types. So basically, unarmed attacks can do more damage Unarmed is massively nerfed now because if you get hit, it completely resets your stack, meaning unarmed is now terrible. This is very easy to get, and there are certain situations in which it is useful, like the infected brood of the boss fight, so it's going to go in C tier for me. Nowhere near as good as it used to. I think last time I put this in S tier. It was one of the best trinkets in the game. It's gone all the way to C because they nerfed Lil Fist, and that nerfs the entire build, which means the power droplet is nowhere near what it used to be. C tier. Rotten bear D tier, really? The Rotten Berry Charm. If you use this, you need to give your head a wobble. This thing gives you Rotten Deluge, so if you're using Rotten Weapons, you proc like a little cloud, similar to the set bonus now of the Broodmother Armor, uh, but who's using Rotten Weapons? Seriously? S seriously. They only go up to tier 2. The Rotten Red Ant Club is probably the best Rotten Weapon. Don't use them. They do less damage than regular weapons. Give your head a wobble, get this thing in D tier, chuck it in a chest and never see it ever again. Next, we have the Shield Solidifier. This one's in the Brawny Boy bin, and it makes it so if you hold down the block with, like, a shield or a weapon, the bar that you have in the bottom right corner has much, much, much more block protection before you get stunned. Um, this can be a pretty good trinket for those of you who like to block and don't like to perfect block for some reason. I'm going to say it's a solid B tier. Easy to get. Increases your bar massively so that you pretty much will never get stunned from taking attacks. Um... I personally don't really use it, but I can understand its utility. So I'm going to put it in a solid B tier. Next, we have the salt. Now, you're thinking, I put this in B tier. I'm going to have to put the salt lower, right? Because less enemies are weak to salt. Uh, wrong. The reason the salt uh, is really good is because the wasp queen is weak to salt. And this can be really, really effective in the wasp queen fight for massively boosting your damage. I'm going to say this is a solid A tier trinket, I'm going to be honest. In medium difficulty, it's really good for killing the Wasp Queen. It has a 1% chance, chance to drop from salt clusters, but they respawn really frequently in the salt mines, making it probably one of the easiest ones to get out of the candy trinkets. Uh, candy, salt isn't a candy. But um, I'm going to say this is a solid A tier trinket. It's very, very good, particularly for the Wasp Queen. That's the main use I would use it for. Uh, I wouldn't really use it anywhere else. Maybe the Mantis fight, if you wanted to use it in the Mantis fight as well, since it's weak to Salty. Next, we have the Speed Droplet. Now, this can be stolen from Aphids, um, which makes it a little difficult to do. The best way to do this was to use a pet Aphid, but they nerfed that and changed it so you can't do it anymore. So the best way to do it now is to make like an Aphid trap, uh, and then you just punch them all, use Heal Bassers, reload if you need to, and eventually you will steal this trinket using Rascal Rogue, obviously. Um, you do need Rascal Rogue or Sticky Fingers to get it. So, is it great? It boosts your speed by 10%. For reference, Natural Explorer does 50%, and Aphid Slippers does 20%. This only does 10%. So, uh, it's not really great. It takes up your trinket slot. Um, personally, I don't think this is great. It's very difficult to get. 10% speed. It's cool, I guess. I'm going to give it a solid... I'm going to put it in B tier. It, it, it can be good. If you really like running across the yard really quickly, it's good. But it is very difficult to get. And I can't see myself using it in a lot of situations. Um, I've also just realized, actually, that this is a picture of an aphid. I never even saw that before. I always just thought it was a cool pattern in the middle. But it's, there's, a, there's a picture of an aphid here. Oh, my God. My world has changed. Next, we have Sticky Fingers. To get this, you will need a crossbow, um, Black Ox crossbow with bomb arrows, or the Moldy Matriarch Blaster uh, from the Infected Broodmother to break the gum nugget inside of the toolbox. Um, this allows you to steal items from enemies, including the Speed Droplet and another trinket, which we'll cover later on. This is an S tier trinket. It's one of the best trinkets in the game. It allows you to get more twinkling shells from scarabs. It allows you to get more drops from... Whatever enemy you want drops from, you can get more. It makes the game so much better. You get so much more loot. It is easily an S tier trinket. It's not even a debate. Uh, you guaranteed to get it from that particular gum uh, in the toolbox. So there's no RNG there with getting it either. S tier trinket, no questions asked. 
Next, we have the mint trinket. Now, I'm going to put this one in A alongside um, the salt one. No, I'm putting it in B. I'm not, I'm not going to, let's not beat around the bush here. This one can be really difficult to get. The reason for that is it is a 2% drop chance from mints, but the mints you dig up from the ground, as far as I've been told, can't give the trinket. It's only the mints that naturally spawn in the boxes or spawn on the surface by default, like in the upper yard on top of the ladder or by the oak tree in the upper yard as well. Um, not the ones you dig up from buried treasure. Those can't give the trinket from what I'm aware, unless they've patched that since. Uh, the reason it's B is because a lot of enemies are weak to fresh, and it's particularly useful if you're trying to fight the infected broodmother uh, and you're using like a toenail scimitar strategy, for example. So yeah, solid B tier trinket. I don't even need to say the name of this trinket. You all know it's going in S tier. Thor's Pendant is probably uh, the best trinket in the game. If we were organizing these, there would be an S plus tier that it would go into. It's the best trinket in the game. You get it in the upper yard, guaranteed. No RNG, you just go pick it up from its location. What do you want me to say? The thing is amazing. Because I don't think some people uh, understand how good Thor's Pendant is. I'm going to read out the boosts for you. So... Increases health regeneration by 1 HP every 10 seconds. Increases stamina regen by 5 HP every 10 seconds. Increases critical hit chance by 1%. Increases critical hit damage by 10%. Increases healing received by 10%. Increases sizzle resistance by 10%. In uh, decreases attack stamina cost by 10%. Decreases stamina regen delay by 10%. Decreases hunger and thirst drain by 10%. It's like 10 buffs in one. How could you not love this trinket? You don't even have to combine it with anything to make like any rubbish recipes or anything. It's just there. It's the best trinket in the game. No debates. S tier. Easy peasy. Next we have the Toxicology Badge. This gives you gas resistance and dust guard, but it makes you take more poison damage. Obviously you wouldn't use this if you're fighting something that was poisonous. Uh, how do I feel about this? It can it can be useful for dust. The dust guard can be good if you're going into like the termite nest. Um, you know that, that that's about it. Or if you're fighting dust mites, I guess. I don't really like this badge at all. Um, the gas resistance used to be good when it was a hundred percent and you didn't need a gas mask, but they changed it so that you don't get a hundred percent gas resistance, which means it's C tier. It can be useful if you really want to use it and you don't want to use like a gas mask or the termite chest plate. It can be good. But it's nothing crazy. Um, it's, it's a C tier trinket, realistically. Obviously, a guaranteed from the pond lab that you find. Next, we have the volatile bank. Now, for those who don't know, this makes it when you perfect block, you have a 30% chance to explode and um, do a bunch of damage to enemies or heal the enemy if they heal from explosive damage, like the infected broodmother does. Um, you steal it from infected wolf spiders, making it very hard to get. Because if you're trying to steal this, you can't use the fungal charm on the infected wolf spider, which means you have to use sticky fingers to steal it. And then it becomes a complication because you end up getting destroyed by the infected wolf spider like I did for um, hours on end. But once you get it, it's an okay trinket. It's particularly effective in the boss fight versus the infected broodmother. If you use a fist strategy, you can use it to heal her and then do even more damage and stack your fists even more. But for me, it's a C tier trinket. I don't use it much. Um... It's cool to have explosions. The biggest problem I have with explosions usually is that when the explosion triggers, it can make it really hard to see the enemy. So it makes it really hard to perfect block the oncoming attacks if you can't see them uh, because of all the effects of the explosion. So it's a C tier for me. Next, we have the Wasp Queen Trinket. Um, a tier. Now, you might be surprised. Why are you putting this in A tier? You hate bows. This has a thing called Arrow Refund, which basically means when you shoot an arrow, there's a chance... Um, it doesn't consume the arrow and you get an extra arrow. I don't like bows. This, this trinket isn't actually that effective. The reason it's in A tier is because you equip it. You, you go to a corner of your base and you shoot it at the wall or at the ground a bunch of times. And you just keep picking up the arrows. And eventually you just get infinite arrows. The best way to do this is with a crossbow. You just shoot and then you cancel block cancel with your left trigger. And you just spam a bunch of shots. Uh, and then you just get infinite arrows and you can just farm arrows. Obviously it doesn't work with certain types of arrows, uh, like any of the special ones, because those get used when shot. They turn into like feather arrows, for example. But if you're trying to farm splinter, feather, or regular arrows, you just use this and shoot a bunch at the ground. 
Also very easy to get now. The boss trinkets are much easier. You just steal it or you just get it with um, Dissection Expert. So it's an A tier trinket for that reason. The Whittle Whittling. Here we are. A guarantee from the web sack in the Black Widow lair in the composter. Um, this is an A tier trinket. You equip it. It summons uh, little black widows. You can combine it with mom jeans and Mansteria Stranger for a summoner build. You get loads of summons and it's really, really good. I do believe these widows also inflict venom on your enemies, which is why the Broodmother Trinket is so uh, average, because you might as well use this for the venom effect, and why this trinket from the Infected Broodmother is also so average, because you might as well use this to summon these and do venom instead of the little explosive attacks, and you can get more summons this way as well. So, it's a solid A tier if you're using, like, a summoner build. It can be a very, very useful trinket. Finally, we have the Sour Wormhole. It's a 1% chance to drop from Sour Candies, making it very hard to get. There are very few enemies weak to Sour in the game, other than the Orc enemies. Uh, the one use you could maybe have for this is when you're trying to defend the final defense. Um, that, that's the one use I can give you, is the final, the final defense mission is it could be useful if you have it equipped, but I personally wouldn't use it. So I'm going to put it in C tier because because that's the one use of it. It's not completely useless. D tier for me is trinkets that are virtually completely useless that I'll never ever use. C tier is ones that I don't really use. They maybe have one or two uses. B tier is trinkets that I use from time to time that are definitely uh, have their uses where they can be good. A tier is trinkets I use somewhat regularly and can be either really good or exploited in some way. And S tier is ones I use all the time that are amazing trinkets that I, I think have absolutely no drawbacks and are very easy to get. That's my final tier list. Uh, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like on it. I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Uh, I'm probably going to redo a lot of these tier lists myself because I think it is very worth doing for the 1.2 update. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.